Recorded live. This is Rich Bernardo, and this true story I'm going to be sharing here, the man uh, who told it to me is going to remain anonymous. He was a Vietnam veteran, and this is a true event that occurred in his life. I had gone out with some friends and had quite a bit to drink. I'd been told over and over never to mix different types of alcoholic beverages, but true to my independent style, I downed a fifth of tequila in a two-hour period and then drank some beers and a little whiskey. We were having a role-playing game at my brother's apartment that night. But the more I had to drink, the faster everybody decided to get me to my apartment on the other side of the complex, upstairs. So my girlfriend, who was living with me at the time, and a couple of stout guys helped carry me up the stairs to my apartment. All of the liquor was taking effect by now, so my knees buckled under, and I fell flat on my face on the concrete terrace in front of my door. My buddies lifted me up while Parnita unlocked the door. Inside, I headed straight to my bed and crashed. I had a hell of a time getting to sleep, and there was something tugging at my mind, something I couldn't get a hold of. About two hours later, I woke up and was choking. I had peeped all over myself, and now I was choking on my own vomit. I was nowhere near sober, but the phone next to my bed was ringing. I grabbed it, and that's when I first heard the news. My sister was dead. She had been killed in a bad accident, and the driver of the other car had hit and run. Sis was only 19, and I had just seen her a few days earlier. She was driving her new silver Trans Am, a brand new car she had gotten two months ago. She was engaged to be married. Now that was all over. The voice on the other end was an officer or some such, and he gave me brief details of the wreck. The car had been totaled, and my sister had been pulled out of the wreckage with severe injuries and massive bleeding. She arrived at the hospital, DOA. My first reaction, aside from shock and outrage, was to get up from the bed and go to the hospital and stay with her body as she was moved from there to the funeral home. But my body just didn't respond to my mind's orders. I couldn't move. I just couldn't get up from the bed. My girlfriend came in and told me I ought to just stay put because I was plastered and there was nothing I could do anyway. But I already knew there would be hell to pay for the guy in the other car once I got my hands on the son of a bitch. The cops beat me to it. The man was arrested about two hours later near Easton. The wreck had taken place in Austin. He was a black man, heavily inebriated, and he had a history of drunk driving. He was booked on several charges, among which was involuntary manslaughter, hit and run, and DWI. The following days were hell. The funeral of my sister, the grief, the whole thing was traumatic and I was just obsessed with the loss of my sister. I assumed that justice was being done and that the man would go to the penitentiary. But when the big day in court came, I attended and the man got a year's probation. I made up my mind it wasn't over. It wasn't going to end there. No man was going to kill my sister and just walk scot-free. No way. So I bought a high-powered rifle. I knew how to use the baby, too, after three years in Nam. And I began stalking the man. I ate, slept, and breathed the killer of my city. I knew I was there. Everywhere he went, I was not far behind. I followed him to liquor stores. I stayed a few yards behind him in city parks. Any place he went, I went. One day I had the perfect chance, the ultimate opportunity, and every fiber in my body said go for it. I had the man in the sights of my telescopic lens, and my finger was itching to pull the trigger when I suddenly decided to let it go. I lowered the rifle, sighed, and knew that it would do no good for me to become a killer myself, that the taste of revenge was not worth the lifetime penalty I would probably pay for it. And at that point, I felt a spiritual relief. 
a sense of satisfaction, a certain pleasure just in knowing that for a few seconds the killer's life was in my hands. I could have avenged my sister magnificently. I could have blown her killer away, yet I decided to let him go. I made the pivotal decision, the spiritually great choice. Four years have passed. I've been through many jobs, many girls, and many apartments. I am now a computer student at a small college. From this experience, I've learned a great deal about life and death.